Hey, and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over my Stardew Valley endgame setup, uh, specifically uh, what I have around the farm to help my Skull Cavern dives. This is built off of the same file that I did my Skull Cavern min max guide on. I'll show you what um, I have set up to help uh, my daily Skull Cavern dives, and uh, and then we'll get into a dive and, and show you what's changed from you know my year one dives to uh, now. Okay. Um, so first things first, um, we have my inventory. Um, I've had that Iridium pickaxe since spring of year one and the galaxy sword as well. I think it was summer day two. Um, we are still using salads for energy. And the difference here is that um, now once you get into the end game, it's more about using staircases to go all the way down um, past level 100 of the Skull Cavern, um, just get very deep until the Iridium starts to spawn everywhere, and then you just bomb everything. Um, there are a couple things that help me get the um, the Mega Bombs and, you know, this huge stack of staircases, so I'll show you that. Um, as far as gear, I have two Iridiums, Iridium bands set up. Um, this is just for, you know, the extra, really it's the magnetism that helps. If you aren't familiar, you can, uh, if you don't like the color of the, the purple space boots, um, you can take those to the tailor that's in Emily's house and you can combine that with any sort of other boot. So what you get is, um, I have leather boots here, um, but they have the defense and immunity boosts of the, the space boots, which is kind of nice. I think that was introduced in, in the 1.4 update and I really like it. Um, we also have the return scepter. Um, this means that I don't have to pass out necessarily at the end of the day. I can get back to my farm really quickly. And you know, my, my favorite boosts are the spicy eels and the triple shot espressos. Um, when I'm going for something like um, battery pack farming and looking for Iridium bats, I'll put on a burglar's ring and that's just to, you know, guarantee or have a greater chance for double loot. Um, have my warp totem to get to the desert. I'll show you what I, why I have a chest with me right now. And let's get started and give you a little tour. Uh, none of this was, was decorated, I think, the last time you saw my um, save file. So it has been a while. But we'll go ahead and speed up things with the boost just so we can get around the farm quickly. Um, <laughs> I guess I will put on the knight's helmet. Um, you get that after you sh slay um, 50 pepperexes, I believe. Um, you kind of want to look the part when you're going down in the Skull Cavern, so I feel like it fits. Um, okay. So this is my farm in year two. I have a little ode to the Skull Cavern, a nice little uh, pixel art skull. Um, if you run around this three times in a row the day before uh, Skull Cavern dive, you will get extra luck. Um... I have three ponds, but only two of them are populated right now. Um, this is with sea cucumbers, and the other one is with eels. Um, that is for, um, well, how about we get to the uh, greenhouse real quick, and I'll show you what I have set up, but it's for lucky lunches and spicy eels. Just giving you a quick tour of things. I had a meteor and a giant pumpkin. Let's get rid of this row. We don't need that anymore. Um, so, in my greenhouse I have corn and blue jazz, and that's because uh, what I want to do is start making lucky lunches. They require uh, the cucumbers that were in my pond, uh, blue jazz, and tortillas, and tortillas are made out of corn. Um, so basically, those are more, I, I believe it's two or three plus luck instead of one of the spicy eel. I don't use it down in the cavern, but anytime I'm not um, doing a skull cavern dive, it's it's nice to have that luck boost just, you know, when you're fishing or farming. Um, it makes a lot of sense. Um, today is only the 10th of spring year two, and you don't get the um, lucky lunch recipe until um, the queen of the sauce on the 28th of this month. So I have everything set up and ready to go. I just don't know how to make the lucky lunch yet. Um, same thing with spicy eels. Um, that recipe comes in the mail from George when you have seven or more hearts, and I'm not quite there yet. 
Um, but if you've seen my guide on, or my min-max guide, you can trade rubies uh, to the desert trader for spicy eels. Um, so that's how I've been getting my um, spicy eels so far. Okay, I ran around and I, I know you probably saw these sheds, so let's uh, hop over to those real quick. This is my decorated coffee slash storage shed. Um, you know, I basically what, I, what I'm doing now is I'm still trading diamonds for um, triple shot espressos to the desert trader. Uh, but if you have, you know, a bunch of coffee cr uh, crops growing, you don't really need to do that, right? You can make triple shot espressos with the coffee you make. Um, okay, moving on. This second shed now is where that chest comes into play. Um, as you'll see, I have this completely stacked with crystallariums. And uh, I, I don't know if you caught a glimpse, maybe I'll, I'll run out real quick just to show you. Um, but one of my large projects down here to the right and all the way around and around my uh, um, animals are a bunch of lightning rods. Um, so the, the hard part about getting a lot of crystallariums is the lightning um, striking and then getting the battery packs you need, right? Um, so the easiest way to do that is in summer or fall. Um, you can, once you have a thunderstorm, you can use a rain totem, which are also a little hard to get. You need the pine tar, um, and those can be a pain. But regardless, once you uh, once you have a thunderstorm and you use a, a rain totem on that day, it is guaranteed to be a thunderstorm the next um, the next day. So it's a it's a good way to just farm a lot of those battery packs and and get it you know get enough for the crystallariums you need. Okay, so the other thing I didn't point out is that I can't walk through this. And that's because um, I could have set this up, you know, alt optimally. So, uh, you know, I can walk through the aisles of the jade and diamonds and uh, rubies. Um, but what I'm using is, let's see if I can show you right now. So you see this grid that pops up on my screen. Um, this is part of the automate mod. And I hope something like this, maybe, maybe not as overpowered as as it, this currently is but i hope in the next update um we'll get something like this where you don't have to go around and collect everything you can just put a chest down and anything that's connected to each other um will be collected so let me see if i can get this right is it right there nope. there we go <laughs> so when i check my chest everything's been collected I can come back here for the jade every two days and uh i didn't mention it yet but if you've seen my other videos you know that on sundays you can trade jade to the desert trader for uh staircases which explains all of the staircases i have okay i think i've gone through everything that helps me out with my skull cavern dives on the farm um you can, instead of, you know, doing a shed like this, I hope you like the mining decor, by the way, um, you can put crystallarium somewhere like uh, the bus stop, um, the train station, the desert, because nobody walks there is actually a great place to do this. Um, you can upscale this or downscale this, you know, as much as you need. But uh, how many jade did I get out of that? Yeah, 146 jade. 28 uh, diamonds for triple shot espressos and 23 rubies for spicy eels. Uh, that's more than enough to, to cover these sorts of runs. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and reset the day. And I'll be back with just a quick run through the Skull Cavern to kind of show you how that's done. Okay, I'm back with the day reset. And uh, let's make it to the cavern and, and kind of show you what a run looks like now in year two take a desert totem as quickly as possible. I will probably put on my buffs immediately so I can run over there more quickly. If I had any um, diamonds or rubies to trade, I would just run over to the desert trader real quick, but um, today is not the case. So now what we're gonna do is start, whoops, spamming staircases. Oops. So the idea here is that as long as there's not a rock, and sorry, I'm gonna try and talk while I'm doing this so it won't be very efficient, but as long as there's not a rock in front of you, um, you can just keep spamming the staircases 
Um, sometimes, if I'm really paying attention, I'll be looking for pits um, that are on screen and I'll run to that just to, to save a little bit of time. Um, but as you can see, I'm just going to the left or right of my character and holding down the right click, sometimes in the front, oops, um, sometimes <laughs> diagonally, um, and sometimes I mess up and there was a staircase there. I don't, I'm not worried about it because I have so many. Um, but yeah, this is the idea. Uh, instead of, you know, if you remember the, the min max guide where we're slaying our way through and you know hitting all of the the rocks and hoping for um uh, shafts to spawn um i can just get down quickly doing this 7 a.m and we're already at level 45 and we're just gonna keep going so hard Oh, this is an example of a pit that just spawns right in front of me. Eight levels. That's eight staircases I don't need to use. Or ladders, I should say. You can see the uh, Iridium's already starting to spawn. We're at level 70. And sometimes you get like those uh, dirt paths where it's an unsuitable location. So I just move to another tile. Um, in rare cases, you will be completely surrounded by rocks and you just gotta pull your pickaxe out and take care of that so you can put uh, a staircase down. Oh God. <laughs> this is not a foolproof method. Sometimes I accidentally put more than one down, but that's okay. We're not even giving the uh, serpents or other enemies a, a chance to catch us. And the only damage I've taken is uh, from that one pit that we found. Oh god. And really, it's just this simple. I'm holding down my uh, right mouse button. Um, I guess it will be a little different for console players. Um, and then if there's a rock in the way, I just move over to the next tile. Okay, so just like that. Um, it's not even noon yet, and I'm now at level 300 of the Skull Cavern. Um, the jades that are in my shed will keep me going every couple days, so I can replenish my staircases. Uh, eventually, when I get more crystallariums, I can do something like fill up the desert and get thousands of jade every couple days. Um, but at this point, uh, once you've gone down wherever you need if you know you just need iridium bats you could just staircase down to level 50 um but now we're down to level 300 um iridium ore should be spawning by the dozens um and the next step is just to bomb everything you see i'll go ahead and put on my speed buffs again let's see if i can multitask And when there's so much like this, honestly, you can just look for pockets. Um, it, it's okay to bomb yourself every now and then. Just, you know, take a look at your health and um, make sure you're good there. Fill up with uh, salads when you need to. Um, so then you're looking for pockets of iridium ore. Oops. Clearly, I'm not very good at multitasking. And you can see just started at level 300 and already have a prismatic shard so that's good and there's no real science to this you can take your time um, I kind of just willy-nilly go around um, I don't think I mentioned the the mega bomb stash and you can buy those for I believe it's a thousand a thousand gold from the dwarf um, also you will be getting a lot of ores to make other types of bombs. Uh, specifically, when you get gold ores, um, that plus the solar essences and, excuse me, the the void essences, um, which you can buy from Krobus every day. Um, he sells 10 a day. Um, those are all options of craft, crafting the mega bombs. Um, also, you're going to be getting so much iridium ore, you can trade that to the desert trader for... 
I, I believe it's five Iridium more for a Mega Bomb if you want. And yeah, there's, uh, you know, when you're this far into the end game, uh, you don't really need money. Um, this is just kind of a fun thing to do. Maybe you have a project or, um, you know, you're trying to get the gold clock. There's another prismatic shard. Um, you know, you can um, just do this for extra profit. Um, and again, if you haven't seen uh, my min-max guide for the Skull ca Cavern, um, where I basically get all of my profits from cavern dives, um, what you do is once you have the blacksmith perk, uh, iridium bars, so once you smelt all of this iridium ore, is worth 1,500 a bar. So let's say you're, you know, you're getting um, a, a single iridium ore is, is worth 300 based on, you know, how much the bar sells for. Oh, here's a secret note. Um, so yeah, it's a quick way to, to get a lot, not a quick way because there's a lot of, uh, setup involved, but it is, you know, a very profitable way of doing, um, you know, kind of the end game start, uh, content in Stardew Valley. So I didn't check the, the luck for today. Um, it is good to just wait to do these sorts of, uh, dives on a max luck day. Um, that way, you know, the staircases and the uh, shafts, there's a, there's a better chance of those spawning. Okay, so that about wraps up um, what the end game Skull Cavern dives look like. Um, there's a lot of things you can do if, you, if you're into this sort of thing. Um, dive even deeper before, or, you know, using a lot of staircases before um, you start to bomb. You can see I started on... Um, I started bombing on level 300. I only made it 83 levels. Um, I don't know what the luck is today, um, so you should always wait for a max luck day. Um, but yeah, look for clusters of Iridium Ore, um, bomb the heck out of it, and hope for the best. I, you can see here I have you know over 674 uh, Iridium Ore. That I found eight Prismatic Shards. Um, you can utilize things like Magic Rock Candy um, to make these go even further. Um, this wasn't meant to be like an optimized playthrough. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of uh, what the strategy looks like. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave a like if you want. Consider subscribing and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.